Hi guys, Marius here. Today we'd like to introduce you to the Thousand Sons Army. We will divide this video into a few parts because we've got so much amazing stuff to show you. In part one we filmed Nicola during the process of airbrushing the vortex beast and then Barbara putting oil paint on the top of it. Let's see the girls in action! But first, who can paint using oil paints? Everyone! Painting with oils is easier and requires less experience than painting with the acrylic paints. What can we paint with the oils? The bigger the model, the better. In particular, the vehicles, beasts, the space marines, etc. What do you need to start painting with oils? A brush. There are several sizes available. Let's compare the prices to the brushes. Oil brushes on the left, acrylic brushes on the right. The palette. You can actually make it from anything you want. We're using plastic plates. Any hard surface will do. The basic oil paints. We are using the Windsor & Newton oil paints that are over $30 each. The small tube will probably last for a lifetime for a normal person, but we are buying the big ones because we are very optimistic. But as you can see, for the price of one Windsor & Newton, you can get two scale 75 flow sets. They've got good cost to value metric and will be more than fine for the beginning. White Spirit Turpentine So the final cost is... Learn how to airbrush with Nicola, our airbrush master. Trick number one. When I prime with a spray, I usually cover around 90% of the model. It is much more efficient this way, as the remaining 10% is usually hidden and covering it would use far too much of the spray. Trick number two. I have pre-made mixes of the paints I music frequently. They all have an optimal consistency. It saves so much time. Trick number three. I'm building up the volume with the zenithal highlights. If I do this white base first, then I will be able to use vibrant inks, as they are usually transparent or semi-transparent. They need pre-shading to blend well, so all the other colors on top of it will be more vivid. Now I can think of where I want my attention and the lights. I'm doing white in here, where the tentacles are, because this spot will be filled with bright colors later. So we've got the black and white model. Now I take these two to create the general colors. None of those will be covering the whole model. Some parts will be using one color, some the other one. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't know if it's the right color, but let's go with it and see what happens. It looks like okay, but not the way I would want it to look like. Spilling break! Now let's take the blue violet and do the darker bits. Oops, something fell off, but that's alright, we've got it all under control, nothing happened. Let's go back to the black. I will be painting the spikes with it. And then I will make the color shifter and you will see what an amazing effect it gives. I take the red violet to cover the parts around the spikes. I take the color shifter and I will apply it to the spikes, as randomly as I did before with all the other paints. Trick 4. Remember, in most cases color shifters have to be used on top of black surface. Preferably a uh, glossy black. Again, nothing happening, it's all under control. Actually, I did the color shifter right now, because everything is covered with glitter. 
but I can fix it and paint over it. Now I'm gonna do the lights again. I prefer to paint the bigger models, or actually no. I prefer the smaller ones because it's a bigger challenge. And that's fun too! My inspiration for this model was, well, the rest of the models. Now I'm gonna do the green, because it works nicely as the shadows. It's weird to explain what I'm doing, because it's, it's just super random. Ooh, we've got this pretty color in here. We can use it for the lights. Airbrushing on the big models is much easier because there are different shapes and all I'm really doing is using different angles and I don't need to work much with my other hand. I can just control the trigger of the airbrush. I also think that painting on the flat surface is much harder. Now the blue-violet. Like I said before, these colors are very random and I just feel like that's the way it's supposed to be. Now back to white again the insides of the mouth and the teeth. By the way, this model pose was converted by Chris. You won't find it anywhere. So this is how it looks. It has different colors in here and it's a bit green here and here is shiny. The airbrush is not necessary, but it makes all the work with the old paints much easier. If we get at least 10,000 views, under this video, we will paint the big model without an airbrush. So don't be shy and share and comment this video. Next, let's see Barbara and her oil painting craft on the beast. Nicola did a very precise airbrush work on the model. Look for yourself on the beautiful gradients and flashes of the metallic paint. My job is to emphasize these colors in the shadows and highlights and details. Oil paints are drying much longer than acrylic ones. Because of that, blending is much easier. It takes only a few hours to paint the whole model. I start painting by making the darkest and brightest spots. I'm mixing the paint with turpentine and then do semi-transparent and transparent glazing. Because of the fact that oils are not drying that fast, I can put it in the few spots at the same time and blend it with an addition of a different color. The amount of turpentine added to the paint is relevant. If you achieve a very liquid paint, you can easily reach all the hollows. In the meantime, let's see what your favorite Polish teacher, Paweł, has prepared for you today. I heard this is very useful. Hello students, welcome on our next lesson. A word for today is komentarz. It means a comment. I repeat, commentaż. Every commentaż you write means a world to us. Thank you so much. You have to pay attention to the edges of the paint because they might need some cleaning and the colors might fade after drying. Here you can see where I cleaned the paint and where I didn't. Instead of a sharp edge, you can see the paint spilled around. You can fix it by cleaning it with turpentine. If the paint is still wet, you can put a color over it. Be careful! A very thin layer of paint dries much faster. It takes just a few minutes. Watching me paint with oils, the camera lies a bit. I can put the turpentine in here and it won't color the model but on camera it looks like the color has changed. 
The initial color you will see only after some time, or even after a few days. To explain it even more clearly to you, I'll try to show you this on a paper towel. Step 1. Clear turpentine. Step 2. Turpentine with a little bit of paint. Step 3. More paint mixed with turpentine. Step 4. Only paint. I'm aware of how much turpentine I'm taking, so I know how the effect is gonna look like. It does not appear on the model at first. The third step effect will be visible on the model only when it dries. A good couple of minutes have to pass so you can see it. Now let's see the highlights on the back and the difference between with and without Barbara's input. Putting the white paint will help in achieving a very intensive light, especially on the darker models. I'm applying the paint on the model without blending it at first. I'm adding more colors next to it and that's when the blending process begins. On the metal parts, first I mark the shadows with non-metallic paint Then I add silver metallic paint on the most protruding places On these elements the transitions are very subtle from metallic to the non-metallic paints You have to carefully apply the paint not to ruin this effect the shadows on the gold are underlined with brown paint. I'm adding lights later using metallic paint. Just like before, I'm focusing on the hollows, adding more colors to it. The base is a good example of two different techniques. First, using a soft brush, I'm applying diluted paint, avoiding the spots where the lights are gonna be. It's good to wait a few minutes for the paint to dry a little. To do the light, I'm changing the brush to flat one with short hair, a bit more stiff. I'm putting the brighter paint without turpentine on the edges. What an amazing job these two made on this model. Remember to write the words you learned today as a commentar. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked today's video, don't forget to click a like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, don't forget to subscribe our channel.